Have you ever walked out under such a nighttime sky as this, looked up at the millions of stars, and wondered where it all came from? Most of us have, at one time or another. It's one of the most common and profound of human experiences. Many of the secrets of the universe are discovered here, on Mauna Kea, in Hawaii. We like to know the reasons why things are the way they are, and generally, the explanation we like is the one that makes the most sense to us. The simpler it is, the more clarity the answer has, the more we like it. So far as we know, we're the only species that has developed a system for answering some of these questions. The human invention called science. In the thousands of years that this invention's been around, we've come to know the world around us much more intimately. Each day we see a little more clearly into the tiny world of the atom and the giant complexities of Earth's ecosystems. We're even beginning to unravel the miracle of life itself. But science has also taken our understanding far beyond the bounds of our small blue planet. We're starting to understand the really perplexing questions that have bothered us since we first looked toward the heavens. Questions that we once thought best left to the philosophers and holy men. Questions like, where did the universe come from? How long has it been here? And ultimately, when did time begin? But the answers can be even more perplexing, for as we will see, time itself began with the universe. In Europe until the 16th century, people measured time with the fluid vagueness of the sundial or the hourglass. For an explanation of the ultimate beginning, they looked to the Old Testament and no further. God created the heaven and the earth, and that was that. To question otherwise was to be guilty of heresy. But the poetic and seemingly final biblical description of creation left some bothersome questions unanswered. Questions such as, what happened before God made the universe? Did he make practice creations? Is he still creating? In the fourth century, St. Augustine came up with what turns out to be the most accurate answer to questions such as these. It is simple, it is elegant, and more so. It closely matches the dominant scientific theory today. What St. Augustine stated was this. There was no time and no space before the beginning. Now, this is a concept that admittedly boggles the mind, but we have come to hold the view because it best explains what is observed in distant space, billions of light years away. The idea started with the work of astronomer Edwin Hubble. In the 1920s, Hubble began observing distant galaxies, trying to determine which way they were moving. At that time, many astronomers thought the universe was infinite and unchanging. In such a steady state universe, as they called it, Galaxies should be moving randomly throughout the universe. So equal numbers of galaxies should be moving toward the Earth as away from it. Astonishingly, Hubble discovered that all the distant galaxies he observed were flying away from us and from each other. And the further out they were, the faster they seemed to be going. Before long, scientists combined Hubble's observations with the fascinating new theories of a young man named Albert Einstein changing our view of the universe forever. Because if all the galaxies in the universe are speeding away from each other, logic tells us that they must have all been very close together sometime in the past. Scientists ran galactic cluster motion in reverse and determined that everything was in one place some 15 billion years ago. From this unimaginably small point exploded forth everything that makes up the universe. This was the Big Bang, and it was also when time began. Now, it is, admittedly, a difficult concept to imagine, time having a beginning. We are creatures that exist in time. We know that our parents lived lives before us and their parents before them, so we feel deeply in our bones that there must have been something happening before the beginning of time. But if something happened before the beginning, 
then whatever it was becomes the beginning itself. So we have two choices, neither of which satisfies our desire for completeness. Either time has gone on forever, or it has a beginning. Scientists believe that time began with the universe because time and space are inseparably linked. The one cannot exist without the other. You see, the essence of time is change, and change is expressed as movement through space. You can see this by looking at a clock on the wall. The hands of the clock move along the course of the dial. The Earth rotates in space once every day, and around the sun once every year. Movement through space is the essence of time. The movement may only be small, like the second hand on this watch, but it is still movement. When we talk about the Big Bang, we are talking about an instant when all the space of the universe was constricted to a size trillions upon trillions of times smaller than the nucleus of an atom. Without room for movement, there could be no time. When the universe was so small that it had no size, no dimension, time stood still. The exploding out created space and time and the universe we see today. But before we explain what most scientists feel happened at the beginning of the universe, we want to clear up some misunderstandings regarding the Big Bang. Firstly, it was not some incredibly dense piece of matter which fragmented and exploded outward into a vast, infinite space. It was pure energy, a substance as exotic as any ever imagined in science fiction. All matter, as we know it, came from this pure energy. You see, Einstein's famous equation for converting mass to energy, E equals mc squared, works both ways. We've used it to turn a very tiny bit of mass into a whole lot of energy, a force that can light up our cities or blow them apart. But we've also learned to create a very small amount of mass from huge amounts of energy in laboratories. Not much, but enough to prove it can be done. Secondly, the Big Bang did not explode into space like a bomb going off in a room. Space did not exist at the beginning of time. The idea of the Big Bang Theory is that uh, the whole universe began uh, at a certain instant about 15 billion years ago, and the universe itself expanded from an infinitesimal size. And what people often don't understand is there isn't an explosion where stuff is coming out into a wider space. It was space itself that was exploding and getting larger. We'll return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. Connections to Sunday at 8 on the Learning Channel. Of history, Monday at 8.30 on the Learning Channel. We now return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. In the beginning, there was the force the one force of which all things were made. Scientists suggesting this theory called this force quantum gravity. But what was its origin? We really don't know. There's no way to tell. But one kind of speculation is that the quantum mechanics, which allows things to happen spontaneously, uh, could create a whole universe spontaneously out of nothing. And if it could do that, maybe it could create many thousands or billions of universes all by themselves that we would not know anything about. Whatever its source, the quantum gravity arose and began to form the universe. This single force contained what was necessary to create all the things we see in space and in the universe today. This infinitely small point of pure energy began to expand at the speed of light. This then was the start of the Big Bang. Once the universe began expanding, it cooled a little, just enough to produce a phase change. We're all familiar with the phase changes in matter. Water goes through phase changes as it cools from steam to form liquid water, and then again to form ice. Something very similar happened with quantum gravity. It went through more than one phase change. The first phase change caused the original energy to split into two forces, gravity and something called 
the unified force. And this happened instantly. That is 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the universe began. This number, 10 to the minus 43 seconds, we are not talking about time in any ordinary sense. The number 10 to the minus 43 divides a second into extremely tight